everybody, welcome back to another New Zealand video. So like I finished off the last one with, I said that I was waking up early for some star photos, uh, hoping that the, the clouds were clear and I could see the mountains. And um, it was actually clear about 3 a.m. when I woke up and I did get some star photos. I came back to that S curve in the road and the sky above it was clear, but then the sky a few miles away above the mountains was still pretty cloudy, but I think I got some cool long exposures. So I'll show you guys those right now. And then besides that, I stayed at that spot for sunrise. And again, there's lots of clouds. The sunrise was kind of, kind of dead. I think I got a few photos here and there, but not really anything uh, noteworthy. And then that was about seven o'clock in the morning. And then I drove back to the campground area. I used the Wi-Fi in the cafe at the campground for a little bit and check the weather and basically it shows that it's supposed to rain and be super cloudy in the mount cook area for the next day and a half two days so what i decided to do was i talked to the people at the campground i actually had tonight reserve for that campground as well and i paid for it already but i talked to them and i'm gonna push that uh, about six days forward so I'm pushing my schedule forward. So right now it's the morning and I'm on my way to Wanaka. Uh, I don't have any reservations for any campgrounds or anything. I just show up and book them when I arrive. So I just pushed that one uh, tonight back and I'm gonna go to Wanaka now and do uh, Wanaka for an extra two to three days. So basically right now the schedule is I'm going to Wanaka and then I'm going to Queenstown, picking up my friend B. This is her van. I'm using her van and then delivering it to her in Auckland. And she's flying down for our weekend. I'm picking her up in Queenstown and then we're going to photograph and go over to Milford Sound for the long weekend. And then after that, then I'm making my way all the way back up the South Island and to the North Island. So I am coming back through this Mount Cook area, which is why I pushed that one reserve night tonight forward. So I'll be back here in about six days and hopefully it'll be clear by then and uh, we'll have a nice clear sunny day without any clouds and I actually be able to see Mount Cook. So that's the schedule right now. I just stopped at the same S curve again on my way out of the Mount Cook area and I uh, got some photos there. I crossed the road, got up on a little ridge and got in a little above view of the, the road. So I'll show you guys those photos now as well. So yeah, now we're gonna get back on the road and I will talk to you guys when we're in Wanaka. Okay guys, so I'm here, I made it to Wanaka and uh, it was about two hour drive, but for me in this van, which is quite slow, going up some hills. It ended up being about three hours, but it felt like I was driving for like two days because it's just so tedious driving very slow up the hills. But yeah, we made it and I'm in a campground. It's very nice. And things have just been getting worse and worse the past uh, 48 hours or so. First, it was the clouds and the pouring rain in the Mount Cook area. And now I'm here in Wanaka and one of the most iconic photos that I wanted and have been wanting for a very long time and one of the reasons that I wanted to come to New Zealand in the first place turns out that path is closed from October 1st until November 10th so literally the exact time that I am here it is closed the entire time and that is Roy's Peak you've probably seen a photo of it somewhere on Instagram it's quite Instagram famous. I've heard that there's like lines to get Instagram photos on it and it's like a five to six hour hike to the top of this peak and you get a beautiful view over this lake and the mountains. But yeah it's closed for the lambing season so one of the stupidest reasons I've heard in a very long time. It's fair and I'm gonna obey the rules like you should but basically right now this time of year the sheep here in New Zealand are having their uh, their lambs 
and apparently sheep are really stupid and easily distracted. So because this path to the top of Roy's Peak goes through private property with livestock, such as sheep, they close it off because the sheep have their babies and with people walking through the area, sheep are apparently easily distracted and so they end up getting distracted by the people walking through whatever it is and then end up leaving and forgetting about their their baby lamb that they just had and the lamb ends up dying without a mother so essentially they close off roy's peak for a month and a half to save some baby lambs so it's a good reason it's just a weird concept in my head because i don't see any other animal ever doing that to their young um but hey that's life so we're here i talked to the people at the campground and they gave me a few other suggestions for some hikes so i'm gonna do some alternate hikes here and hopefully hopefully they're just as photogenic as roy's peak i'll throw up a, a google photo of roy's peak or something so you guys can see what i'm talking about but today it's about 4 15 in the afternoon sunset isn't about three four hours and uh, I was suggested the Diamond Lake Loop. So that's about 20 minutes out of town here. It's just a, a short little hike around a little lake up above the large Lake Winaka. I looked it up and the photos look pretty nice. And I think at sunset time, it should be some nice photos up there. So that's what I'm going to go do right now. And then I'm going to hopefully going to get the Wanaka tree for the blue hour and maybe even stars later tonight. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain, but I'm still going to wake up for sunrise again for the Wanaka tree, which is the other iconic photograph here, which I desperately want. And I'm not going to miss it no matter how much it rains. This day probably isn't long enough and I have not filmed nearly enough to make a video out of it. So... I'm going to go hopefully get some good filming on this hike and then I'll maybe talk to you guys about star photos with the Wanaka tree and then maybe even make it into a two day video, but we'll see. And uh, that's enough rambling for now. So I'm going to get my stuff together and go over to the Diamond Lake hike. So I'll talk to you guys when I'm over there. Well, that was a waste of time and gas. I got uh, about 30 minutes here to the Diamond Lake hike that was supposedly open. And uh, here, I'll show you guys what we got. There you go, track closed until further notice. Yay. Again, another disappointment. Got a really nice drive here, and uh, it does look like there are some big clouds rolling in, so I, maybe it's for the best that I don't go on the hike right now, but I guess I'll just go back to, uh, to Wanaka, maybe stop along this road on the way back. There was a few places that might be a nice photo, but it's, it's like 4.45 right now. We're still two to three hours away from sunset, so the lighting is kind of just boring. Yeah. So let's go, let's go back to Wanaka, maybe photograph the, the tree and get some food or something other than a disappointment. So I'll talk to you guys then. Okay guys, again, back in the car. After my failure with the, uh, the hike this afternoon, I went back to camp. I showered, chilled a little bit and uh, yeah, now it is seven o'clock and it's a little stormy and cloudy outside, so uh, we still got about an hour and 15 minutes until sunset, but I figured I'd come down to the Wanaka tree and um, see if I can use this, uh, this moody weather for some nice shots. So yeah, it's really windy. I might not be able to talk out there, but we're gonna walk over to the famous tree, which is apparently like 80 years old or something like that. And yeah, get some photos. So I'll talk to you guys when we're at the tree.
Okay, so we're here at the tree. Hopefully you can hear me over the, uh, the tiny little crashing waves of the lake behind me. But there's the tree. Um, I can't point to it. That's my setup right there. Uh, there's a few other photographers here, a few other tourists checking out the, uh, the really cool tree. But yeah, I have like three or four shoots planned for this tree. And right now it's kind of dull and gray outside and it's also starting to rain. We might not get the best shots tonight, but we're planning on coming back tomorrow morning and then uh, sunset tomorrow as well. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but we'll see what we can get. So right now I just have a straight on shot of the tree, uh, trying to get a little bit of the, uh, the shoreline in it as a leading line and then hoping for some crashing waves and maybe get some drama in the water and the clouds. So I got a uh, six stop ND filter on and then two graduated ND filters to dim down the sky up in the top there. And starting to rain, so probably gonna get a few more shots and then head back to the car and get some food. Hey guys, so we got back from uh, the Wanaka tree and we actually had a pretty nice sunset. What ended up happening was the uh, few clouds that were over the tree passed and the sun broke through right around sunset time and we got a little bit of nice light above the tree. I talked to a few students who were studying abroad here and uh, so I got some new followers on Instagram and got a photo of one of them. So hopefully I got some new friends and yeah, now now it's starting to rain more and it's about 8.45 and I checked the weather and it looks really good for tonight. It's supposed to rain, like I said, tomorrow, but tonight it's supposed to be clear around 2, 3 a.m. Uh, again, there's a moon like last night, but I think, I hope we should get some stars tonight of the this tree again. So hopefully those shots will be good and hopefully these shots tonight came out pretty good. But yeah, so now I'm gonna head into town, grab some food. So. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys when, uh, whenever I take photos next, I guess, because I'm not really sure. <laughs> 